I'm Jennifer Baltzigar, and I'm a postdoc in Fred Gould's lab in the Genetic Engineering and Society Center at NC State. Today I'll give a quick discussion on the evolution and demographic history of insecticide resistance in Aedes aegypti from Iquitos, Peru. Aedes aegypti is a species of mosquito that originated in Africa and has spread to most of the tropical and subtropical regions of the world. Females require blood mills for their eggs to mature, and through their feeding they can spread viruses that cause disease. These include dengue, zika, yellow fever, and chikungunya. These vectored diseases cause a lot of human suffering. Every year, there are more than 300 million cases of dengue globally. To reduce these diseases, we try to reduce the size of the mosquito population. We use insecticides to do this. The most common type is a class called pyrethroids. These work by targeting the voltage-gated sodium channel gene, which is responsible for proper nerve function. Pyrethroids cause the insects to become paralyzed and to die. Due to this paralyzing phenotype, pyrethroid resistance is known as knockdown resistance, or KDR. Application of insecticides selects for resistance in a population. When an insecticide is first used, most individuals carry susceptible alleles. These individuals are killed, which leaves the resistant survivors to reproduce. Over many generations of survivors reproducing, the population consists of all individuals with resistant alleles. We know that many mutations exist within the voltage-gated sodium channel gene. However, there are two SNPs that are known to be functionally important in Central and South America. I work with collaborators in Iquitos, Peru, who have been collecting and storing mosquitoes since the year 2000. I genotype some of these mosquitoes to observe the evolutionary dynamics of KDR. This is a graph of the KDR haplotypes over the course of 18 years. Time in years is on the x-axis, haplotype frequency is on the y. Periods of the different types of pyrethroids used in the city are highlighted by colored blocks in the background. The important takeaway from this graph is that there have been two distinct periods of selection for KDR conferring haplotypes. The first was from 2002 to 2006 when the population went from most individuals being totally susceptible to most individuals carrying one resistance allele at the 1534 locus. The second period occurred from 2010 to 2014, when most individuals in the population went from carrying one resistance allele at 1534 to carrying resistance alleles at both 1016 and 1534. This was interesting because it raised additional questions. The first is, are these periods dominated by one or multiple haplotypes? That is, do individuals with these resistance alleles carry the same or different mutations at other loci in the sodium channel gene? To answer this question, I am genotyping additional mutations in this gene. This will allow me to construct extended haplotypes with more than two loci which will give us power to examine the demographic history. By adding loci to our haplotypes, we can determine if the 1016-1534 resistance allele combinations are identical by descent or identical by state. If they are identical by descent, then the other loci genotyped and added to the haplotype will be similar among individuals. If instead, multiple haplotypes containing the 1016-1534 resistance allele combinations are observed, we can conclude that the haplotypes are identical by state. This information will also help us address the question of whether KDR haplotypes are selected from existing variation within a population or if they are novel haplotypes in the population. If the haplotypes are new, we would expect less variation among individuals whereas we would expect more variation if resistance was selected from within the population. To wrap up, I want to remind you that KDR in mosquitoes is a problem. I found two periods of KDR selection in Iquitos, which raised additional questions I'm currently working to answer. 
Finally, this information will provide insight into insecticide resistance evolution and will help us to control better for resistance in the future. And finally, I would like to thank all of the people and funding agencies who have made this work possible.